Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Art of Awakening. My name is Ona, and we have a requested topic today. It is a heavyweight one, and um, we're going to be looking at kind of dark entities. Um, just here's the question that I was sent by a, a, a viewer. He said, I would like to know more about the entities that like to fool you and feed from you in dreams and in the astral plane, for I have fought against them all my life. I've learned a lot from these archons. If you know anything about them and the weakness they have inside dreams and the astral plane, I would be very grateful. Okay, so this is a, definitely a deep topic. So, so let's start by calling in light. Um, just a couple deep breaths here. Breathe into the heart space. Feel yourself connecting with the breath to the Mother Earth, to the crystal core of Mother Earth. Connect with the breath all the way up through the crown to the central sun and feel that connection above and below to the crystal light aspect of the sun and the earth. Then also sending our awareness to the four directions, to the true east, true south, true west, true north, and calling in light from these directions, calling in our spirit guides, angels, ancestors, all protector beings of light to hold space for this topic because it's a <laughs> it's an intense one. All right, so here, standing here in sacred space, let's examine this whole topic of dark entities, darkness, and how to overcome it, how to work with it. And there's a lot of information out there around archons and dark entities. And I, what I want to, what I'm going to be sharing here today is really based more on the spiritual principles. And I do want to mention that the map is not the territory, okay? So all these things are in the energetic plane. They're, they're energies that we can see, feel, interact with, have experiences with. So the mind understands things in one way. We can understand things very logically. Other parts of our, like our subconscious understands things through symbol, right? Through archetype through even through personality and through story okay there are certain traditions that talk about satan and um you know bales above and those kind of entities there are other traditions that talk about demons that talk about gods and goddesses there are traditions that talk about reptilians okay so i'm not going to really talk about whether these are true or not because in in, in my perspective they're all different ways of understanding the energies, all right? So I'm going to explain things in a very logical way according to spiritual principles. And this does not negate other ways of understanding, but it hopefully will shed light on other ways of understanding so that you can more clearly work with these principles and, and work with however the, you know, these beings show up for you okay so the one principle that i think it, it, it's like the, the the most fundamental principle that we need to understand is the principle of all mind and i also like to refer to it as the principle of divine oneness and that is that everything is a, a part or an emanation of one universal mind all right so this is the first thing that we really need to understand when we're looking at anything um exploring the concepts of light and dark and the concept of quote, you know evil each one of us is an aspect of the all we can't wrap our mind around the all of the all okay um, but just to understand that it exists and that everything, including dark entities, are part of this oneness, okay? Everything is part of the oneness. And so right there, we can understand that the dark evil has a role to play somehow, right? Um, then from the, the law of one, right, we 
also experience duality. This is the law of polarity. Okay, we have to understand that everything that exists has a little seed, you know, at least a little seed of darkness in it and at least a little seed of light, right? Because the dark and light together are polarities of the all, okay? So I feel like the ultimate polarity is this aspect of the all that is creative that wants to expand and and this is the life force right and then there's the counter force to that which is the the death agenda basically which is usually construed at as evil um or often right this can be really 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 complex but in when we're coming up against entities that feel evil right that feel dark or feel like we want to fight them okay there's a couple things that can be happening um one is that it's some kind of energy that's actually ours that belongs to us that has not been integrated that's been somehow suppressed and therefore coming up and just like a child who's been neglected will often act out in order to get the attention, the love that they need, right? Because it's the only way they know how to do it. This is one type of dark entity. It's a neglected piece of yourself that is coming forward and causing trouble because it it's it's pointing out the imbalance or the lack of love in this particular area. Okay. And with this kind of entity. it's it, the task is to integrate it the task is to bring it into the light and to give it love so that it can you know transform and and become integrated into ourselves on the other side of the polarity there are entities out there that are really deep dark anti-life energies they're not part of uh, uh, you know they're they're not going to contribute to a healthy being by integrating okay these are energies that need to be you know there need to be very specific boundaries that you need as an individual and to just you know tell these entities that you can't come further right that you're not allowed here um, so there's energies, dark energies that need to be integrated and dark energies that need to be banished or, or kept out, right? Um, and so it's really, really important to be able, first of all, to recognize that, you know, that there are these two types of en en entities and to, then to know what to do with them and how to discern which one is which because th there are entities that are outside of yourself right that that want to come in and take over and if you let them in if thinking that you're needing to integrate <laughs> and you let them in they actually will take over and and this is what's called a possession right have to be very very confident and very very firm right because these are trickster energies and a lot of them don't want to be seen okay that is where their power lies in not to be seen if you think in terms of this whole idea of quote-unquote light and dark um the dark wants to hide that's where its power is and this is why it's so dangerous to deny the existence of unsavory entities right uh, even the word evil um in in many new age circles people will just completely deny that it exists this is where it gets tricky with the duality, right? Because in truth, if you're looking at it from the eternal all mind standpoint, it's all integrated into one. And, and so evil is an illusion, right? Evil 
is illusion. But when we manifest into the world, everything splits up. And, and the reason there's this ultimate darkness that does show up, that is ultimate evil, is because it is completely ignorant, right? In the splitting, this is the part that that forgets completely that it is part of the all, right? It has completely forgotten that it's part of the all, so completely that it thinks that it has the ultimate power, which is a complete falsehood, right? And so it's so, so super important for us to recognize this and to know this and to recognize that at the very, very deepest level, even like the most quote unquote powerful evil is powerless because it's simply ignorance that it is part of the all, okay? We also have to recognize that there's that seed of us, there's a part of each one of us that cannot recognize the all because it's so fast and we're human, right? And that's that seed of darkness that's there that, that is the reason why these things can come forward, right? And tempt us because it's it's just a, a part of the way the universe is built. We also have to recognize that this performs a function, right? That that darkness is there to help us to learn, right? And because it shows us where where we're not, we're sure, it shows us our blind spots. It shows us where we can't see the light. And every time it shows us where we can't see the light, it helps us bring light into those places. And so it makes us stronger. So the function of evil and of dark entities is to challenge us in such a way that we start bringing light into it. This is why evil has at its core a seed of light and why evil will ultimately <laughs> kind of destroy itself. Okay, so knowing that is empowering. Knowing that, because these forces can appear very, very powerful and they prey on your sense of fear they feed on the ignorance inside and, and they feed on your sense of doubt. And so when you realize exactly what's going on through these universal laws, if you have enough of a basic understanding of the universal laws, you can see this pattern and understand this dynamic. And that allows you to have incredible faith and confidence that no matter how frightening or powerful these things appear, in the light of the all, they have no power, okay? You have to know your rights. You have to know the spiritual law. You have to know the spiritual principles and to be willing to learn these things and to uphold your rights and to insist on them, right? Because these things will want to argue with you. You can't argue. <laughs> You've got to know your rights and just stand up and insist on them. And they will go away because light is ultimately stronger than dark. You have to have supreme faith in that. Okay? So that's one aspect of dark entities is just they need to be banished. You call on your angels and you ask them. You relinquish it to the angels. Don't try to send it to the light yourself. Relinquish it. To the light beings relinquish it to source light whatever it is that feels good to you right relinquish it and allow source light to take care of it allow the angelic um, forces to take care of it um there are certain things that are very ancient energies that are not willing to go to the light and it's important also to respect that so know your limits. Don't try to be erasing all evil from the face of the earth because it's going to 
very likely blow up in your face. It's 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 beyond our limits as a human being. You know, maybe you know an ascended master on the level of Jesus or somebody might be able to do that. Um, I, I'm going to leave that to them. Right? <laughs> um, we need to be very very clear on our rights and our space. When I work with people in session, the first thing I'm always going to do is create sacred space. Okay. And this is calling in the light in all the directions, calling in the ancestors, calling in the angels, calling in the person spirit team, and holding space in all the seven directions, right? North, south, east, west, above, below, within creating this sacred space that's guarded and protected, also connecting with the masculine principle, the feminine principle, the ascended earth and the central sun. We do this in order to create this space of light, right? And especially in the heart space, coming into the heart space. Okay. And so if it is one of these entities, you can calm the light and just say, get, get the heck out of here. Okay, so that's the one type of entity that just doesn't belong in the space and that, that you can deal with. The other type of entity is the type that needs to be integrated. Okay, and I was instructed, this is a, a painting that I was just really shown the other day, uh, an image of this kind of fearsome face, and I was told it's a self-portrait and paint it. Okay, I was like, oh my gosh. So I painted this thing and it was like, oh my gosh, it looks just like Kali, right? This, uh, the Hindu goddess of destruction. Um, I, it, it, it was a very kind of profound experience painting it. The reason the star is on here is that I recognize that, okay, this is actually a dark force, a negative force, right? That actually is in service to the light. And let me explain this, right? We have, as part of the life force, right? A lot of the energy of the life force is nurturing and it's the energy of growth and of expansion and of nurturance. But there's also within each of us as living embodied beings, especially in our animal beings, our animal self, right? There's this part of us that will fight to the death and do anything it takes to survive. That's actually a dark force, a dark energy within us that when it's in its proper relationship, it's supportive of the life force. We need to all be aware of this because we need that part. We need that part of us. Without it, we become weakened to the point where we will not survive. Okay, so this deep, deep animal, fierce nature of ours is very important. But it's also important to know that this deep, deep animal nature that will do anything to survive can also be used and manipulated, right, in, in service of these dark archon energies that, that want to kind of bring life on earth or at least life on, you know, human life to an end. Okay, so this I feel is a very, very important, very pivotal and critical thing to understand about dark energies, that there are certain dark energies within us that are necessary for life and necessary for sustainable survival of life on earth. Um, but that it has to be brought into right relationship. So these are energies that must be fully integrated and put under the command of our, our, our logical nature that's aligned with light. So many of these myths and stories like Androcles and the lion, Androcles ended up in the lion's den and he 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 sheltered with these lines and the lion was going to eat him but it had a thorn in its paw he very compassionately took the thorn out he was compassionate towards the pain of this animal nature right and it became a protector of his so that he was able to live in the lion's den without being harmed 
well, they went their separate ways. And later on, Androcles ended up as a prisoner and a slave in the Roman Empire. And he was actually thrown to the lions in the Colosseum. And lo and behold, when he's in the Colosseum, he's got all these people jeering at him, waiting to see him eviscerated by a lion. The starving, tortured lion comes out, and instead of ripping him apart, the lion goes up and purrs and rubs against him. It's the same lion, okay? So he has befriended or integrated his wild nature with through compassion and understanding and it is now his greatest protector and rather than you know it ended up that androcles was pardoned so was the lion and they were allowed to go free and and this is the this this great victory um, you know, over our dark side, but it has to understand that there's the, this the dark side that belongs to us. The dark side that is there as a protector. Um, the thing is that these negative entities or energies, the greatest thing that they can do, the thing that is the most empowering for them is to co-opt that dark force energy. And the reason why is that this is an energy that cannot be vanquished through fighting. It will fight to the death. It can only be vanquished through death. And even in death, it, 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 if you die with this thing protecting you, it's only going to follow you right through the, the next, it's, it's not going to allow you to be enslaved, right? But it, it, you know, as long as it's it's actually protecting your 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 higher interests. But if these dark entities can go in and through fear convince this wild nature of yours to fight for something that's really not in your highest interest or the highest interest of humanity, that is their greatest victory. Okay, so we really really need to understand where our rights are we have to have our higher self involved in and our higher in our mind right we have to understand what our rights are what the law is what what natural law is and the nature of right and wrong which is written in our hearts this is why it's so important to be in the heart space because only our heart knows for sure right and wrong. Our heart is the only thing that can tell for sure right and wrong. And you have to be very, very quiet and, you know, release attachment to emotional attachments to things in order to really get into that heart and get into the pure emotions that will tell you right versus wrong. Okay. And the reason this is so important right now is that there are massive agendas out there that are designed to trigger fear, to trigger resentment, to trigger anger in such a way as to support the anti-life agenda, okay? And, and when it does that, it takes this fierce energy that is meant to protect us and to be a protector of life. Um, in the Hindu tradition, Kali Ma, she's an aspect of the Shakti, the life force, right? She's this divine tiger mother kind of energy that will protect. She's seen as divine protectress, but she's fearsome. Um, there's a story about Kali Ma that the great mother goddess Durga, who rides a tiger or a lion, was fighting a great demon. And her anger against fighting this demon was so great that Kali, an incarnation of this goddess, came springing out of her forehead. Just this horrific demon, female, female demon is Kali, right? A Kalima. And, but she was the only one who could overcome the worst of the demons. 
you know, there becomes the, the, the worst of the demons that no other of the gods and goddesses can overcome. They send Kali after. Because she's the one that can really dispel any darkness, right? Because she's got that within herself. And so when she's in the service of the light, she's unstoppable. But what happened was she demolished the demon and then she kind of went on this rampage because she couldn't stop herself, right? And the only thing that could stop her was the Lord Shiva, who's her, her masculine counterpart, who represents this eternal nature, laid himself down. He didn't try to fight her. You cannot fight this. It, it's it's unstoppable. That's why it's so effective against the dark forces. That's why they're trying to get it on their side. So Shiva laid himself down in the story. And she suddenly realized that she's dancing on Shiva himself. And that was the only thing that stopped her. Because remember, this dark force is part of that world nature. And it's actually driven by love. It's actually animated. It's a force of love. It's the destructive force of love. It's the protective force of love. And by laying himself down, she had to come to grips with that, that, you know, that this is actually her counterpart. And it was through that realization, that love-based realization that actually stopped and brought her back. Okay? So it's only through love. And again, this is why it's so important to be in the heart space. It's only love that can tame this wild nature. This is why Androcles, you know, was able to befriend the lion and to get that lion on his side. It was through love. And so the, the only way that the real dark forces can co-opt this force is by trickery and by getting it to think that it's protecting us when it's really not on our side. Super important to remember, okay? And I'm going to be releasing another video very soon that has something to do with this. So watch for that, okay? But it's 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 very, very important to remember that this wild animal nature of ours, um, where a lot of us are afraid of it, okay? This is how, this is how it can be manipulated to work against us. Because if we're afraid of it and suppress it, or if we're afraid of it and other people, right? Um, it's important to understand that each person, each individual has this. This is why it's so important to understand and reflect, respect boundaries, to respect personal sovereignty, both your own personal sovereignty and that of others. This is why it is so important to set boundaries and to constantly have that spiritual hygiene of building those boundaries to respect that each one of us has this animal nature and it can be pushed. When we are aware of it, that's when it can, that's when it's at its best, right? If you respect a wild animal in, in nature and don't go past its own boundaries, you're very unlikely to be harmed by a bear or a lion if you stay a respectful distance away from it, right? These energies are unpredictable. Um, but we have to be able to integrate them. Okay, and so this is a long roundabout, <laughs> but long story short, there are aspects of the dark when we call them forward to be seen. Um, sometimes it is this wild beast nature, and sometimes it'll come forward. I've had that come forward in sessions as, uh, you know, a ferocious bear or something like that. And when you work with it and start to dialogue with it, you can ask it what it wants. You can ask it what message it has. And these things, right? But often, it, as you dialogue with it in a respectful way, it will tell you what it needs. And often, if it is a wild beast coming forward, it, sometimes it will change or it will become friendly. And that's where you've 
manage to take that portion of yourself and you know that has become alienated from you and integrate it and it becomes your ally okay at, at other times that may not be the wild animal force that's coming forward it might be another entity sometimes it's an inner child force right um that it will you know sometimes it'll be you know a raging whirlwind or something it'll turn into a child you know um you you converse with it ask it what it needs a lot of times it'll need just love it just needs to be loved and you hold it a lot of times when that happens it'll turn into something innocuous like a money rabbit or something like that or sometimes it'll just ask to be sent to the light and that's beautiful too okay so these are ways of integrating um so i know this has been a really long video and sort of meandering but i'm really hoping that it's shed some light and some understanding on uh, the different types of dark entities and energies that you can come across and how to deal with them um and then finally it's it can sometimes be difficult to deal with your own dark and and energies sometimes it can be hard to see them so it can be helpful to work with somebody who can be a third person to hold space in, in, a, in a strong way for these things to be either you know vanquished from your field banished or integrated in a proper way um if this is something that you feel you need help with and if it feels resonant to work with me i'm going to put the link uh, for information on working with me below i do do this work so um just i'm there if you need me and otherwise uh thank you so much for watching take care and remember you were born to be free